Hello everyone. We hope you've enjoyed our first four video tutorials of the 3CX Call Flow Designer. We are back for number five, and in this video, we will truly make number five come alive. Let's recap briefly what we did in our first four videos. We created a call flow where a caller chose to be transferred to sales or support. Then we added timing logic to get the timing of the departments. We then used text to speech technology to create our various prompts. Then we introduced components, which allows us to reuse various parts of a call flow multiple times. And finally, we used our authentication component to authenticate a caller and verify the ID entered against a database entry. You might remember that when our ID was read back to us, we had the ID being read out as 1,234 and 4,321 instead of 1,234 or 4321. In this video, we are going to make the call flow read out the individual digits of the support ID. We are going to do this by using the loop component as well as the assigning of variables and incrementing these variables. So let's go to our project and create the new component we are going to use. I will name this read digits. In the properties of the component, I will now go to add the variables that will be used in the component. I will do this from the variables field. We see collection in parentheses or brackets, depending on how you like to call them. Click in the variables field where you will see the three dots button. Click it. This opens up the variable collection editor. Underneath the members field, click on add. The variable will be numbered zero with the name variable one. I will rename this to index. I will set this variable's initial value to be zero. The scope is set to private, meaning that this particular variable will only be used within this particular component. The second variable I will add is the length of the digits that has been entered to read them out. We will name it length and give it a private scope. The third variable to add is the digits to read out. I will name this digits. This will be given a public scope, meaning it can use variables from outside the component we are configuring now. It is basically a way of introducing variables from the parent component or call flow into the child component. I'm going to start populating the new component we have just made. The first thing I'm going to move into the component is our existing ID verification prompt I have from the support option component. All I need to do is cut and paste it to the new component. Editing this now, I will remove the second prompt which reads out the authentication ID we created in the fourth video. The reading out of the support ID will be taken care of by the rest of this component's building blocks. From the call flow section, I will now drag and assign a variable component to just under the ID verification prompt playback. This will be named digit length. The variable which will be assigned is now chosen using the function button. I will choose the length of the digits as the variable name. Using the expression field function key, we will now assign the expression to match our chosen variable. Under our inbuilt functions, I will choose len as my number function. This will give us the length of the ID entered. Let's choose the digits variable as the expression. As we want to read one number of the support ID at a time, we will be triggering a mini call flow multiple times. I will do this with the loop component. In programming terms, the loop component is very similar to a while statement. While it continues to be valid, the loop will keep being processed. Drag it from the call flow section. Let's name it read single digit. So how many times will we go through the loop? 
we will create a condition that as long as this condition is met, the loop will be used. We will use our index value to define this. Double click on the loop to open the condition. Click the function button. We want the loop to be triggered whenever the value of our index, which is currently set to zero as an initial value per call is less than the value of the length of digits. So our index will initially be set to zero. After the reading out of each digit, we will increment the index by one. So before reading out the second digit, our index will now be incremented to a value of one. Before reading out the third digit, the index will be incremented to a value of two. Before reading out the fourth digit, the value of the index will be incremented to the value of three. As the entered support ID is four digits, the loop will be triggered up until the index is incremented to the value of three. On the reading of the last digit, we will increment the index to a value of four. We don't want the loop to be triggered again after the index has a value of four. I will use a Boolean function of less than and choose the index variable as my first expression element. This will be less than the value of the length of the digits. So I will put my length call flow variable to be the second expression element. What we have essentially done now is define that we want the index to be less than the length of the entered digits. Now to define what we want to do in the loop. We want to read out the digits, don't we? So we need a prompt to read it out. Let's drag a prompt playback component into the loop flow. We will name it read digit. Let's go and create the prompt which will be read out as a function. Within the prompt, we will go to our function key and select the elements of the numbers entered to read out. As we will be reading out the digits which have been entered one by one, we will use the mid string function which will allow us to do this. This allows us to define three parameters which will be used to manipulate the prompt. The first variable is the whole four digit support ID as entered by the caller. So I choose the digits variable we entered in our initial component. The second variable is the index, which will define our zero based starting point. As the initial value of the index is zero, we start at the leftmost position of the number. The third element is the increment value of the second variable. Defining this as one, we'll read out one digit at a time. After the reading of the digit, we will proceed to increment the index value by one. From the call flow section, I will drag an increment variable component to change the index value and increment it by one. Let's rename it to increment index. Using the function key of the component, I will select the index variable we assigned. Now let's go and implement this loop into our existing call flow. Going back to the support option component, we can see the call flow we created in the fourth video. When a valid four digit support ID has been entered, the valid input call flow will be triggered. We moved the ID verification prompt playback component earlier. So all I need to do now is drag a new read digits component from the user defined components section where we will read out the support ID digit by digit. The finishing touch now is to define which digits the read digits component will be reading out. 
When we created the variables of the new component, we defined the digits variable with a public scope, meaning we can use variables from outside the component. Selecting this newly added component, we can see the public scope variable is visible. All I need to do now is define from where the digits to read will be taken from. The three dots button in this field will open up the expression editor, where I can go and select a variable from outside the component. I will select the authentication ID in this case. So we have implemented a loop which allows us to read out a support ID digit by digit. What happens, however, when a caller enters a support ID which is not a valid ID in the database? The call will go through the validity check with the database verification, and the call will go through the invalid ID call flow, where the caller will hear the prompt that the ID entered is invalid, and then the call gets immediately transferred to the sales option component. It doesn't really give them a chance to re-enter their support ID. The authentication component has its own loop feature, where the caller is given three tries to enter a valid support ID. But when the caller enters an invalid support ID, as the call flow stands right now, the inbuilt loop is ignored and the call gets transferred to the sales option component. So what we will do now is move the sales option component in the invalid ID call flow to the end of the call flow of the support option component. After entering an invalid ID three times, the loop will no longer be triggered and the call exits the authentication call flow where the call gets transferred to sales. The reason why this happens is the following. The authentication component uses the maximum retry counter of the component to determine if its loop is still valid. As long as an invalid ID or PIN is entered, this counter is used to determine if the loop will be triggered again. In our valid ID call flow, we send the call to technical support and the loop breaks. But what would happen if we don't send the call somewhere within the valid ID call flow? Quite simply, the authentication component will ask the caller for the support ID again, even if they entered a correct ID. The authentication component has a variable which will allow us to break the loop when a valid ID has been entered. This is the validated variable. It is just a Boolean value that when set to true, will inform the authentication component that the required valid data has been entered and that the remaining retries do not need to be processed. Otherwise, it will process the loop for the amount of retries defined. We don't need to do anything in this example, but it is just an explanation of the logic used. In the case we just mentioned, we would need to assign a variable, just like we did in the read digits component, and define this as true. So let's go and build this project and upload it to the PBX before we go and test it. Coming to our PBX, we will go and upload the project to the PBX. Then going to our inbound rules, we will modify the routing of the inbound rule to reflect to the new project. Let's go and test that now. For our test, we will enter an incorrect four digit support ID and the call flow will read it out. As it will be incorrect, it will give us three attempts to enter a correct ID and it will then forward our call to sales. Welcome to our company. Press one for technical support. Press two for sales. Okay, so I'll press one. Please enter your four-digit support ID. I will enter an incorrect four-digit support ID. The support ID you have entered is 1111. The ID you have entered is not found. Please enter your four-digit support ID. Okay, I'll try that again. The support ID you have entered is 2222. The ID you have entered is not found. Please enter your four-digit support ID. Try that again. The support ID you have entered is 3333. Three, three, three. The ID you have entered is not found. Your call will now be transferred to sales. And just like that, our call gets transferred to sales.
So there you have it. Our core flow has read out our support ID digit by digit. And since we entered an incorrect support ID three times, it was transferred to sales. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.